Hello YouTube, what's up guys? My name is Bob Blue. I'm here today with my uh, Mako Scarlet. Come here Scarlet, come on, hello. Guys, this is Scarlet. She is 10 month old. And as you can see, she is such a playful, loving, biting, nibbling parrot. Uh, when I say she's nibbling and biting, she's really, really literally just playing. It's not biting either, I think she's just playing. But if she wanted to, she could have really caused some really, really damage. Uh, so she is really just playing around and we want to teach her not to bite the fingers. So every time she goes to bite the fingers, we make a noise like ah, and she releases it. Ah, and then she releases it, she realizes that she's hurting you and she just learned to go a little bit soft on you. And um, if she did bite, um, bite you or start nibbling, what you do instead of playing with the bird, you take it back to a perch. And you would leave it there, whatever, just to show that the bite's not appreciated. But what you don't want to do is to ever hit a bird. It will uh, make you lose the confidence in the bird. And the friendship that you built all that time will go downhill. So whatever you do, you can shout with a loud no, really loud no. So the bird realizes that it did something what you don't like. But um, that's their way of communicating. They use their beak and everything. And sometimes... And sometimes this is the way they explore and they put a bit of pressure on it to see how much they can go down with it. But uh, I've been really, really good with um, Scarlet, training her really, really well. We've also uh, been doing some free flights uh, in the garden. Check those videos out without the harness. I know you're meant to be taking, uh, doing it for longer, but I got so much confidence that we managed to do all this within a, under a month. And that's not even fully training just that me having so much trust in my parrot and vice versa the bird trusts me so much i can literally even while she's eating go underneath a wing like that and you can see it's not even bothering her vice versa the other put my finger in a mouth and all that it's not bothering her she just became so so um super tame but that don't mean that she'll always stay like that to keep them super tame obviously guys you need to be um spending time with the bird a lot every day and every day is a learning day for the bird and make, make the tasks nice and easy. Uh, make it an easy target that they can reach and they get, re they get rewarded for it. As you can see, this is her playful mode. And she got her wings and they're out. She likes me to grab her by the leg, put her upside down and everything. So I let her perch on my um, shoulder for a while so she knows not to bite the ears and... This is part of my hairs and this is my beard and everything. And what she can do and what she can't do, what is accepted, what is not accepted. And um, watch a lot of videos. There's so many, so much informa information out there, which is um, free information. And also owning a macaw, you know, they're really, really loud. You can just, you can hear her. Really, really loud. I think it's one of the loudest birds I've ever heard. When they really want to squawk or make their things present they're really really loud uh, me personally it's what I like about them I love their um, <clears throat> their attitude they got their character is unbelievable it's like uh, can I explain it's like a dog monkey a bird everything all in one so they're just more than what a normal bird would do they're so playful let me see if I can get it down if I can get this camera standing somewhere like that no, nope. it's not gonna work. So it's quite hard to do it for me to do it with one hand. What it also does is I really, when she's on my shoulder, gets her head, gives her all this nice little scratch it what she really, really enjoys. And she can still sit there for ages, just enjoying it. And what this does as well, guys, it bonds uh, a nice bond between both of you. Because I'm speaking to the to the camera she thinks i'm speaking to her so she acts a little bit funny whenever i'm on the phone look i can lift it up by her one feet like that put it down there and she goes she's just such a playful bird such a playful bird and you scarlet stay on my stay on my shoe let me show you guys the size of a tail guys it is absolutely long 
So the scarlet macaw has the longest tail from all the macaws. Look at the size of that tail. Maybe longer than the birds. So guys, another thing as well is that a lot of people get bit because when you go to a parrot, you start you put your fingers straight into their mouth, which is absolutely wrong. You're asking for it. And sometimes um, bird, they're in different moods every, every time. Um, so what you do, you approach them very, very nicely and calmly. Put your finger there nice and gently. If you put your finger there, sometimes they will bite you. But then you have to correct them and let them know that it's not uh, accepted by um, a sharp no. And then don't, give, don't pay them no attention. So they realize they did something wrong, which is not accepted. And every time they're playing with you, look, the more they play with you, the more time you're giving them, the more you're scratching them. They'd enjoy all this. And for them, it's all new as well, because this is only a 10-month-old baby. So everything and every day is learning. And I heard, guys, that they can live up to the age of 80. So, well, even 70, 65 is a long time. Anna, come here. Go show everybody what you can do. Step up. Step up. Step up. You can step up. Good luck. I'm asking her to step up. If she's not stepping up, I'm not going to force myself to do it. I'm just going to let her do it in her own time. Step up, Scarlett. Step up. You can step up. And then we can take her like this. Hold her like this. Hold it upside down. Put her on my lap. And she enjoys all this. Always got to be nice and gentle, not to hurt her, and she will really look forward to it. Grab her by her feet. I can lift her up, put my hand on the bottom, tickle her like that. She's enjoying everything. She's enjoying it. So these things like that will take time. You don't rush rush into it. Otherwise, the bird won't know what he wants, what he wanted to do, and he will get scared. Come here. Come here. I'm on my phone. Not my phone. I can all. She always also lets me pick it up like this, so I can pick it up like that. Put it on my. She is absolutely one of those cuddly, cuddly tame parrot. And to keep them like this, you have to work on it, guys. Weekly thingy, just work on it, and then the bird will learn what you want, and you will learn what the bird likes and what the bird doesn't like. Now, if you have any other advice for me, please. I'm always there to learn myself. Um, put your comments down below and if you have any questions put your comment down below I'll do my best to answer uh, I'm not a bird expert even though I've had birds all my life but I don't say I'm an expert at birds or monkey or anything like that so I'm always there to learn and always also there to be corrected so this is something what I just found that works with me which I'm sharing with you guys and hope that the information comes useful for you guys also outside here we have a big massive aviary that my monkey shares, Chico, and also the Moko shares. And this allows a lot of them to have a see the outside world, a lot of fresh air, and mainly and most importantly of all, is that it, um, it lets them get a lot of the sun, which is very, very important. When you have these birds in your living room, in your bedroom, and they don't get the sun, you need to make sure that you get a way of getting that vitamin D to them so their health, their skin, the color on the feathers and everything stay nice and beautiful. She is right now still going through a molt. Let me just take it off my shoulder. So I've got purchase up here for her. I got her cage up here for her with the bile on the top. I got another one up here for her to break this and chew these up. And she's got this whole room that she can fly around. And this one there, that's her poop, her poop perch. So whenever she wanna go poop, she always does it onto this perch, on this perch here. And also I've trained her to fly off me if she needs to go poo, go there and do a poo and come back to me. And so far it's worked amazing. I thought it'd be harder to train her to, to do this, but it's come really, really good. So this is the Avery guys. As you can see, it's really, really raining now. And she loves the shower. I'm not gonna put her up here now because there's not enough daylight left to dry her dry her feathers up. I don't want her to catch a chill. Go on, off you go. And also with the glass being there, I can sit into this room and I can watch them there. 
So guys, thank you so much for watching and take care.